Okay. Hi guys, it's Carrie, and I know that my book videos tend to be a little incoherent, but I literally struggle to form proper sentences regarding my feelings towards all of these books, so this is going to be even worse, but we're going to give it the grand old try. As you guys can probably tell, I am talking about Lee Bardugo's Grishaverse, and I know that the hype train has like left the station years ago, and I'm quite late, but better late than never. I think a lot of you guys have already read these books based on messages I received when I said I was starting Six of Crows, and half of you guys were like, oh, enjoy it, savor it, I wish I could read it for the first time again, and the other half were like, turn back, don't go forward, proceed with caution, it will ruin you, it will break you. Um, and now that I'm on the other side of it, I can honestly say both of you guys are correct. I simultaneously feel both of those things. <laughs> so if you haven't read these books yet, especially the Six of Crows duology, enjoy it. You will love it. It will break you. It will ruin you. And it will leave you feeling equal parts whole and so empty. This is your final warning. I feel like if you've already clicked on this, you're like halfway into renting or buying one of these books. So yeah, that's just proceed with caution is all I can say. That being said, this video will not contain spoilers. I'm just going to briefly introduce the books and give kind of my vague opinions on them. I don't even think I'm capable of going into detail about how much I love these books, but I'm gonna leave a couple book reviews by like proper booktubers in the description box. Some of them are laugh out loud funny, um, so please go give them a view. And if you've already read these books, um, these reviews you, you will feel seen is all I'm gonna say. So let's begin. I put Six of Crows on hold at the library based on your guys' recommendations. I really didn't know anything about it other than a lot of you said that I would like it. I didn't know that it was part of a universe or anything like that. And even though I would say Six of Crows can really stand alone, it doesn't need to be read in, you don't need to know about the universe to love it. I wish I knew how to read them in order. And so this is the order that I read them in. I'm not mad about it. It's not the way that you should read them, but it's how I did it and I didn't really mind. In my opinion, it doesn't really matter if you read Shadow and Bone or Six of Crows first. Chronologically, Six of Crows does come after the Shadow and Bone series, and the Shadow and Bone series is really like the introduction to the universe. Six of Crows alludes to a few things that happen in Shadow and Bone, but nothing that would ruin the plot at all. But as you guys might have seen in one of my vlogs where I said, oh, I finished Shadow and Bone, now I'm gonna read King of Scars. Um, <laughs> don't do that. King of Scars is a pretty much a continuation of Shadow and Bone and it does ruin the ending. I wasn't super mad because I kind of knew where Shadow and Bone was gonna go, um, but do not read King of Scars unless you have finished Crooked Kingdom, the second book of the Six of Crows series because it, I'm surprised she didn't put a warning because it ruins a major plot point, like a, like, Mm. Even if that's the only book that is available at your library and you want to start reading the Grishaverse, don't do it. Like that book has to be read last. That is my PSA. Now I'm going to jump into the books. That's the order. Do with it what you will. So starting with the Shadow and Bone series, we follow our main character, Alina, who is just a normal girl. Her country, Ravka, is sort of involved in this long unending war and so all the young healthy people typically find themselves in the army in some way or another and the book starts where her regimen i guess um is going to cross this piece of land called the shadow fold and the fold um is just this like desolate darkness like it was basically created by really dark magic and it's it's just emptiness and it's inhabited by these these really gross creatures called the volcra basically like 90 percent of the people who cross it don't make it to the other side without any spoilers there's basically an incident while she's crossing it 
as there always is, she ends up finding herself in this very weird position where all she wanted to do was be like a map maker and like live a happy normal life. And of course, the opposite happens and she just gets thrown into horrible war and power struggle and all that good stuff. This is also where we are introduced to the concept of Grisha and Grisha are people who are born with magical powers, I guess is the only way you would describe it. There's a lot of different kind of Grisha. You kind of learn that they're simultaneously revered for their powers, their talents, because they're very useful. But there's also a lot of people who fear and hate them, like they're considered witches and they're, you know, very scary. In some countries, they're hunted. In Ravka, they're, they're pretty protected. But, um, Shadow and Bone basically just sets the scene of the entire universe. How do I feel about these books? Well, complicated. So the main issue I have is that I genuinely didn't like a single character until the final book. In the third book is when I was finally like, oh, okay, these characters are growing on me. I'm not sure if it's because I was so strongly attached to the characters in Six of Crows, but Literally every single character in this book is borderline annoying, if not completely annoying. And they've all got these like big flaws. Like some of them are just straight up evil. Some of them are just mean. You just basically can't trust anybody. So I just had a really hard time getting into the book because I wasn't necessarily rooting for anybody to win. But the redeeming quality of this trilogy is that Lee is the queen of plot twists. I pride myself on, I, I read a lot of mystery, I read a lot of thrillers. I like to think that I can figure things out at least right before it happens. But the end of this trilogy, there is a twist that I genuinely didn't see coming and I thought it was very interesting. I wonder how I could see some people not liking how it ended um, but I would I was honestly just pleased that I was surprised. So good on you, Lee. You got me. Great job. <laughs> so basically I enjoyed the series. It did help give me more content. Like I just wanted to read more in that world. So that's kind of why I liked reading Six of Crows first. Even though Shadow and Bone wasn't better, it kind of helped like heal my wounds. <laughs> like help I don't I don't know like bring me down from the six of crows high so yeah it was a solid series no hate just kind of overshadowed I think by six of crows which brings me to this damn duology six of crows so six of crows is about a crew of six people that are brought together for a heist uh, thanks to kind of the ringleader named Kaz Brecker it takes place in Ketterdam which is a city where there's basically gangs and then there are merchants. It's all about, it's like major capitalist society. It's all about money and success and power. So Kaz is kind of a higher up in one of the gangs called the Dregs and he lives his life for cutting deals, getting good bargains. And he describes himself as a businessman, like a very violent businessman. I think he honestly, has more like bloody violent moments than a lot of the like villains which is weird for someone who like kind of becomes one of the most loved characters <laughs> he is offered a job um that will bring him a ridiculous sum of money that even if he splits it with his crew like it's going to be life-changing for him so of course even though it is a completely impossible job um, he takes the challenge. So I'm gonna briefly introduce each of the characters because like I said previously, I love them all so much. But one thing I really, really love about this book is how diverse the characters are, whether it's like racially, I guess you would say, or their sexual orientation, their backgrounds, their beliefs, their attitudes, their views on life. Um, they're all very, very different and it doesn't feel forced and I really appreciated that so let's jump in. First Cass brings on Inej and she is so interesting. She is an acrobat by trade but she has just had the shittiest time. She basically gets kidnapped and sold into slavery and put into like a pleasure house 
at the age of 15. So she is like tough as nails. She is basically like a spy for the dregs. She's just a very interesting character because she has a really strong moral code. She is pretty much the only character that's like constantly struggling with is she being a good person or not? There's this quote that you you know, so I'm paraphrasing it. Be careful when fighting monsters that you don't become one yourself. And I think she's the one that kind of keeps the crew conscious of that and is constantly asking like, okay, but are we really the good guys here? Like, aren't we kind of turning into the bad guys? She's just a really interesting character. Next up is Jesper, who is so charismatic and so funny and usually if an author tries to write a character that is specifically there to be kind of a comedic relief to be very witty um sometimes i think they go overboard and the character ends up annoying me jesper literally had me laughing out loud he it wasn't overkill he's just very funny and he basically is really good with guns that's his skill, keeps the morale up, and I really love him, so. Wylan is another member who is talented with chemistry and making things go boom, basically. So he is there to make bombs, and he has a couple other reasons, but the book gets into it for why he is on the team. We don't get a whole lot of Wylan in Six of Pros. Pretty much everybody gets at least one piece of the story told through their point of view um, which really helps us get to know the characters but Wylan actually doesn't get one so he's still sort of a mystery but he does get a lot more um, character growth in Crooked Kingdom but basically in Six of Crows him and Jesper's banter is just and I love him a lot I, ca I came to love him so much more after that we have the lovely Nina who is Grisha so that means that she does have powers and they involve the workings of the body so she can make your pulse go faster or she can put you to sleep and she can vaguely change appearances so she's very handy for this kind of thing um, and she is a firecracker I think the more that I think about her the more that i like reread her parts she is so complex and just such an interesting character i think for like a strong female character she is so vulnerable but also like so strong-headed and so sure of herself and so strong um i don't know i just i really really at first she wasn't my favorite but honestly i love Nina um, and she deserves the world she gets put through so much I just want to give her a really big hug um, yeah Nina just a really excellent character and last but not least is Matthias who is an ex-soldier who used to hunt Grisha and thinks they're an abomination so you can imagine how Nina and him get along but they actually do have a history that the book gets into and it's it makes the story so much more interesting and I think Matthias is a really important character because it kind of questions whether or not someone can unlearn the prejudices that they were born into um, and taught and you know can a person change i just think he's a very important character you grow to really really love him in the end i am very thankful um for Mateus. so basically they have to stage a heist that involves breaking into a completely impenetrable fortress in a foreign land it's so action-packed and there are so many twists and it leaves you on the biggest cliffhanger and i literally had a meltdown like if you follow me on instagram you might have seen me just post like i am so angry about this um that was like the tip of the iceberg i kurt can attest to this i literally was just laying in bed like having a temper tantrum i was so mad because i had to wait for i think it was like 10 weeks for my holds like crooked kingdom to come in on hold and there was no way i was gonna wait 10 weeks to figure out what happens in the second one so luckily my mom is the best she actually saw my post on instagram and so she sent me the kindle version so that i could read it the next day so thank you mom so crooked kingdom picks up pretty much immediately where six of crows leaves off and 
This book, I think most people would agree with me that Crooked Kingdom is even better than Six of Crows. You just get to know the characters so much more deeply. You get a lot more of their history, why they're the way that they are, because like I said, they're, they're like borderline bad guys. Like they're not good people. Like Kaz literally just kills people who are in his way. <laughs> So it's really helpful, I guess, to, to learn about why they are the way that they are, which also makes you feel so much more connected to them, which makes every painful thing that they have to go through like a hundred times harder. There is action and romance and comedy and tragedy. Um, so I think even if you aren't really into fantasy, I would say still read this duology because it's almost like the fantasy element kind of just takes a back seat, which is sort of why I liked Six of Crows more than Shadow and Bone is because it didn't feel like I was reading this fantasy. Like it, there weren't castles and going to magic class and stuff like that. Strangely, it felt more based in reality, um, even though there there was magic. So I would definitely recommend this even to people who aren't interested in the fantasy genre. Last but not least is the King of Scars duology, which actually isn't finished. Only the first book is released and it follows Nikolai, who is a character in the Shadow and Bone series. You meet him in the second book of that trilogy. And finally, I really like his character. So I actually read this right after Shadow and Bone. So I didn't, I never met Nikolai in the Shadow and Bone series yet. And I'm honestly kind of glad that I read King of Scars first because in Shadow and Bone, like I said, you can't really trust anybody. So it feels like everybody has these like hidden motives and stuff like that. But in King of Scars, you learn about his true personality and why he is the way that he is. I really really love him as a character and so going back and reading Shadow and Bone I don't know I saw him in kind of a different light than how he was originally painted I actually quite liked this series I think that Lee's writing just keeps getting better and better so I'm very excited for the second one um but like I said you have to read this one last do not just like jump in reading this one because yeah don't do it and last but not least will I watch the Netflix series Hmm. So I'm really hesitant to watch it because first of all, first of all, whoever cast Kaz Brecker, excellent work, but I'm not sure if I'm going to watch it. I'm always scared of watching things based on books because I've created such a cool world in my brain that I know the second I see whatever they've made, um, the images that I have in my brain will kind of be messed up. So I'm gonna watch the trailer for sure. It looks like whoever did the casting did an amazing job. So yes, um, we'll have to wait and see. And that's pretty much it. I've heard rumors that there's gonna be a third Six of Crows, but I'm honestly so happy with how it ended. Like I think it, I would love for more content, but at the same time, I feel like more content might ruin it. Um, I'm happy with just kind of letting my imagination continue the story. Um, she left it, I think, at a really good point. I'm just a really big fan. I felt I was kind of in a reading slump until I read Six of Crows and now I'm just like back in it, like devouring books. So if you are in a reading slump, pick up Six of Crows, um, pick up Crooked Kingdom because you're gonna wanna read Crooked Kingdom too. Thank you to everybody who recommended it. I'm sorry it took so long for me to get around to reading it, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that I did. So yeah, just thank you everybody. I, mm, man, I don't know how to end this other than please go read these books if you haven't. And I will talk to you guys next time. I'm gonna try and do another book video because I have read quite a bit more um, recently and I know we're all spending a lot of time at home reading. So I will catch you guys a little bit later. Thank you as always. Bye. Mm -hmm.